HRC, 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 Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Council Fo. And I'm your brother, Zach Law. Hope you're all enjoying this Shabbat today. And we thank you all for taking the time to come spend this time with us. We hope you all have been enjoying the edification and the series of things we've been going into to help us for our growth in the faith. And today, I think this is going to be really helpful for us to help us perfect ourselves. Um, anything before we get going, Zach Law? Nope. I'm ready whenever you are, brother. All right, my man. Today we're going to discuss the mind, body, and the senses. Our body and constitution is created for the Lord, with our mind to help us choose to keep its uses for the Lord. But the devil uses his spirits to turn our minds away from Allah to give our body for unclean uses. Can you read 4th Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 21 to 23, please? For at the time when Elohim created man, he implanted within him his passions and moral nature. And at that time, he enthroned above all the holy leader mind through the medium of the senses. And he gave a law to this mind by living according to which it will maintain the temperate and just and good and manly reign. Sakwa, can you touch on the leader mind through the medium of the senses, if you have anything to give on that? All right. It says, for at the time when Allah created man, so this is when man was being created, he implanted within him his passions and moral nature. So he gave us for us to be able to have passions or emotions. And he also gave us logic, which is our moral nature. So we have two things that he implanted in us. And at that time, so at the same time, he enthroned, so he gave us something else that was above both of our passions and moral nature. And that is the holy leader mind. So that's where we will understand something or we can see something. And through our faith, we'll actually walk towards it, though it's not able to be seen. So that's the holy leader mind because it's, it's holy, it's faith. Um, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. So that holy leader mind, what he enthroned and put in us for us to be able to follow or seek after him. So that's what that is. Through the medium of the senses, so by us being able to control our senses, control our passions and our senses, it allows us to be able to truly tap into faith and have that holy leader mind guide us through the medium of our senses so with us being able to control and being able to tame our senses and have dominion over them it makes them medium where they're actually um under um under our dominion where they don't have dominion over us where we will be given over to our senses or our passions and it'll control us so that's what he's talking about. Praise Allah for that. That's what Paul was saying. I keep my body on this subjection. Mm -hmm. That's good for us to know is when we get to perfection in our minds, we'll see the fruits of it in Allah Hayim's work in us, strengthening us to control our senses. That's why in 4th Maccabees 2 and 23, it says, and he gave a law to this mind. So it was the mind that I was just referring to. 
by living according to which it will maintain a temperate and just and good and manly reign. So, a manly reign because he had days in it. Right. <laughs> it's a manly reign because you're in control, you're not being controlled. So, the man is the one that actually controls, or he's the one that is actually leading the house. So, it's 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 synonymous. So we all have to have that manly reign in us, just in a different way. We all have to have that manly reign in us when it comes to controlling our passions, our senses, and our moral nature, and being able to medium our senses. So that we can have that holy leader mind to actually go towards Allah and be operating and, and maintain that temperance and being just and being good. So we all have to do that. Just men, you can see where the manly reign comes from because men are the leaders of the household. Amen. That understanding of the leader mind being holy from Allah I looked up the definition for medium. It's an agency or means of doing something. So when that power is in the mind, all our senses become a means of doing the will of Allah. They're all for his uses. So, well, that's pretty much the lesson, everybody. So we hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> Uh, all right so we know what we're talking about today <laughs> there's plenty more <laughs> so i am not only gave us the law but he also as we know he gave us the mind to fulfill the law and with that he also gave us seven spirits to fulfill all just and good works temperately can you read Testament of Reuben, chapter 2, verse 3, please? And seven other spirits are given to him at his creation, that through them should be done every work of man. The first is the spirit of life, with which the constitution of man is created. Our constitution is our composition, or design, or anatomy, if you will. Our physical being was created by the spirit of life. And it's the portion of the spirit of life borrowed to us that keeps us alive. From what Reuben explains, it was given so that we could perform the works of man, which is to fear Allah and keep his commandments as Solomon explained our duty is in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 and 14. This spirit is a spirit free from lies that we have to return unto Allah I am pure, or else we would be considered robbers. It's called the spirit of vivification in the Apocalypse of Paul, and it reports about us at the end of our life, telling whether we fulfilled our duty unto Allah I am or not. Let's continue to the next spirit, please. The second is the sense of sight, with which ariseth desire. This desire of the eyes was the good desire we were given to do well. As we've seen, we were supposed to have that holy mind so that our desire of the eye would be a sense that is used to fulfill the will of Allah. Now, good desire, she's a feminine spirit that Allah had given to us to do good and have mastery over the evil desire of the world, which is a daughter of the devil. We will touch on this when understanding the spirits of fornication or spiritual children of fornication when that discussion comes up, if you will. Let's go into the third spirit, please. The third is the sense of hearing with which cometh teaching. This hearing was given so we could obey Allah Hayim's voice and hearken to the angel of righteousness he gave to be with us and his teachings of righteousness instead of the angel of wickedness and the spirit of fornication's teaching, which leads us to hearken to other spirits instead of those of the family of Allah Hayim. The 
this helps understand what Paul was saying in Romans 10 and 17, please. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Elohim. So what we hear in our ear, what we receive and cleave unto in our mind is where our faith lies. And that will lead us to whichever direction we're trusting in. Whether obedience to Allah and his law and his spirits or being instruments to go fulfill desires and pleasures to lead to our destruction. Did you have anything else there? No, I'm good right now. Okay. Jump in as Allah leads you, please. Testament of Ruin, chapter 2, verse 6. Let's hear the fourth sense or spirit that we were given, please. The fourth is the sense of smell, with which tastes are given to draw air and breath. Zach, well, explain to me. The nose and smell was given us to help us sustain a righteous life. For with it, we breathe easily, and we also can detect harmful things from a distance and close to us. Our sense of smell through our nose comes with taste. So whether something is good or bad for us, we can distinguish through our sense of smell. All right. And as you all know, the breathing is interesting, nose and breathing, how it plays into our calmness or whether we're in a fit to know what spirits at work in us. The fifth spirit, please. The fifth is the power of speech, with which cometh knowledge. We were given the power of speech, to speak sound speech in the one good doctrine of Allah, that everything we speak will be true, and nothing but truth will proceed from us to keep us from the devil, the father of lies. Continue, please. The sixth is the sense of taste, with which cometh the eating of meats and drinks, and by it strength is produced, for in food is the foundation of strength. Zach will also explained that the mouth has its uses to sustain us too. From the creation of Allah, food and drink only can enter one place. Therefore, it was meant for only good things to enter to strengthen it but the snares of the devil have deceived us to let evil proceed out of our mouth corrupt communication and upbraiding speeches as well as uncleanness to enter through our intake of unclean meats let's continue to the seventh spirit please The seventh is the power of procreation and sexual intercourse. This was given us to impregnate our spouse and multiply so that we may lack nothing in the earth and also have the pleasure that comes in the marriage bed with our spouse being ravaged with their love to keep us from fornication. This power of intercourse can lead us astray if we are intemperate in the pleasure of it or lacking contentment with what Allah has given for our portion. Continue, please. The seventh is the power of procreation and sexual intercourse, with which through love of pleasure sins enter in. Wherefore, it is the last in order of creation, and the first in that of youth because it is filled with ignorance and leadeth the youth as a blind man to a pit and as a beast to a precipice. Besides all these, there is an eighth spirit of sleep with which is brought about the trance of nature and the image of death. Allah gave us a spirit of sleep to help us as he speaks in sleep, to give us instruction and keep us from our sins or turn us from our sins. Yet, also, the devil and his spirits can be at work in sleep to lead us astray as well, as we have talked about in lessons past. Can you read Job 33, verse 14 to 18, please? And Allah speaketh once, 
yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw men from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. We see here, Allah sends dreams to instruct and correct us so we can avoid the pit by not continuing in our sins. We touched on how Allah speaks in dreams to show us what spirits still have place in us and things we need to work on in the spirit of anger lesson. Please revisit that for further edification. Now, building on understanding how our body was made for the Lord, we see eight spirits given to us to help us fulfill Allah will. And the Lord, to whom the body belongs, knows us, and he has given us what's necessary for each of us to do right, if we truly choose to. Can you read Sirach 15 and 17, please? Before man is life and death, and whether him liketh shall be given him. We see already is what we like, what we want is going to be given to us. Gad the seer eight and seven, please. And he gave each one free choice. If one wants to do good, he will be helped. And if one wants to do evil, a path will be open for him. So we see that he made our body for himself, yet he gives us the choice to choose to render ourselves unto him for his uses. He has been particular for each person in how he created us according to the portion we need to fulfill his will. So none of us are actually lacking what we need to choose to serve him and give ourselves unto his will. But the things we learned in this life hinder us to be selfish and keep parts of ourselves instead of fully cleaving to Allah. Can you read Naphtali chapter 2 verse 2 to 6 please? For as the potter knows the vessel, how much it is to contain, and bringeth clay accordingly, so also doeth the Lord make the body after the likeness of the spirit, and according to the capacity of the body doeth he implant the spirit. And the one does not fall short of the other by a third part of a hair, for by weight and measure and rule was all the creation made. And as the potter knoweth the use of each vessel, what it is meet for, so also doeth the Lord know the body, how far it will persist in goodness, and when it beginneth in evil. For there is no inclination or thought which the Lord knoweth not, for he created every man after his own image. This aligns with the understanding Hermas was given by the fact that Repentance is given to those whom the Lord sees their heart is going to become pure, but not given to those who repent in hypocrisy. So like Zakwa talked about, we truly are in Eliam's hands, as he is having mercy and compassion on whom he wills. And there is nothing for us to glory in, in ourselves, if we are found worthy of repentance to be saved, because it will be by his doing and not our own, as all we really have is the choice to submit to his will and yield ourselves unto his service, and he does everything else. In knowing the struggles we face in the world, Paul spake to us to help us understand as men this reality. Uh, Romans 6 and 19, please. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. So as we're given over to our desires in our life, now let's give ourselves over to our highest desires in our life, in everything. Philippians 2 and 13, please. 
For it is Allah Hayyam which worketh in you both to will and to do of its good pleasure. That's knowing our insignificance. It's Allah Hayyam at work. He's the one that's willing us. He's the one that's doing it. When we see good works, we're unprofitable servants doing that which we were bid to do because we know it's actually Allah Hayyam spirits doing it. And it's Him willing it. It's not something for us to glory in. And that's why we glory in that we know Allah Hayyam that exercises loving kindness because when we see good happen, we know it's Him. We know it's coming from Continue Philippians 1 and 6, please. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Christ. Being confident, as we talked about the faith. Being confident when you see he started something, be confident he's going to finish it until the day of Yahweh Christ to keep working and not turning back or being deterred or being doubtful in mind about the deliverance to come if we continue steadfast. Hebrews 13 and 20 and 21, please. Now the Elohim of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Yahweh, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Yahweh Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, it's Allah I am doing it. Pray he make us perfect to do every good work according to his will. And to work in us what's well pleasing really depending on him we're going to touch on even abraham and his process of seeing how he really gave himself over to Allah and everything all right and so it hopefully help us not have confidence in ourselves but confidence in Allah all right be confident in what he's doing and his process we have to go through outlined in his law we have to give our whole mind and body over to this work in every choice so that we may be able to perform it sincerely in singleness, agreeing with Allah Hayyam in everything. If we find a lack of ability to perform his works or find ourselves not fully in agreement, or not in agreement at all, it's a weakness in our will to submit to Allah Hayyam in faith that we have to continue working on as it's not that Allah Hayyam isn't able to perfect us, but our faith in him knowing our insignificance and humility to put our hands to the plow and work at change and submitting to him that's lacking. Our faith and belief that we can be perfect through Allah Hayyam is really essential. you have anything before we continue? Mm-mm, good. Deuteronomy 18 and 13, please. Thou shalt be perfect with Ahaya the Alahayim. Does Christ require us to fulfill this command? Can you read Matthew 5 and 18? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. He does. Let's understand this command since it is still in effect and required of us all. The word perfect, H8549. The Browns Brig definition, complete, whole, entire, sound, healthful. We're touching on the mind of bodies. You see how it brings health within and without. Wholesome, unimpaired, that touches back to the love lesson of being one or nothing blinding us from Allah Hayyam. Innocent, because we're innocent according to his commandments. Having integrity, so we live by a standard, 
outlined in his commandments. What is complete or entirely in accord with truth and fact, we get to where his true and factual doctrine were entirely aligned with it. The Strong's definition is entire, literally, figuratively, and morally, so as to be a complete image of Allah Hayyam. Also, as a noun, integrity, truth, without blemish, complete, full, perfect, sincerely, sincerity, sound, without spot, undefiled, upright, whole. This is what is required of us to be sincere in truth, that we may be complete, undefiled, without spot, and perfect in mind, body, and soul. We will see here in a bit that a man just like us, named Abraham, was able to do this. For us, no, we can too, if we endure the process, trusting and believing it can be done. If you don't have anything, Zappa, can you read Sirach 2, verse 1 and 2 and verse 4, 2, 6, please? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. My son... If thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Allah will bring us through to fulfill his laws if we trust him and we shall be that perfect offering unto him one day. Can you read wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 6 please? As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. So we see he has a process he's bringing us through to perfect us unto himself. We have heard this is not possible, and it's true that it's not possible with men to be perfect, yet with Allah Hayyam it is. And our Allah Hayyam became a man to open our hearts and minds to the fact that with him strengthening us, our Allah Hayyam and his father can make us perfect. So the doctrine and requirement of being perfect for salvation is possible and attainable if only we wholeheartedly believe. Can you read Mark 10, 26 and 27, please? And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Yahweh, looking upon them, says, With men it is impossible, but not with Allah Hayyam. For with Allah Hayyam all things are possible. All it takes is belief and willingness to go through their process and find solutions to fix those deficiencies that are lacking in our walk through those that are appointed to teach. For there are many suggested solutions for remedies, but some solutions come with negative additions, and some are incomplete. So making sure we go get counsel from someone we know to keep the law and is set in place to help us come out of the ditch we may have gotten ourselves in is of the utmost importance. It's interesting, like you said, um, you have to be willing to go through their process because a lot of times what trips us up as individuals is we have in our mind how things should go or how things should play out or what is righteous, a righteous way of doing things or things playing out to us. And that right there trips us up a lot of times where we're not willing to just go through the process and take things on cheerfully and uh, take things as they come, seeing that all things are coming from Allah Hayyam. We don't look at it as 
is coming from Elohim. We look at it as it's that person has made a decision that has impacted you or you have made a decision that has impacted you. Yes, you did make a decision that impacted you, but it came upon you because Elohim knew what you were going to do, just like the scriptures we just read before. When he created you in his image and he portioned out the spirit that was going to be given unto your vessel, he already knew what you were going to do. So when he puts you in these scenarios, you do have the ability to make a choice. But a lot of times he will put you in that scenario so that you can see. So you can see something that you may be lacking or something that you may be struggling with. And it's unto you the way you receive it. So whether you receive it and the seed falls on good ground and you receive it quickly and you're like, hey, okay, I see that. Let me make the changes. Or you're blinding yourself from seeing it because of your own desires. And then he has to continue afflicting you where you keep going through things until you understand what it is that he's trying to get you to understand because you can't go forward to the next lesson without learning the lesson that's before you because you need the things that you're learning in this lesson to be able to utilize for the next part everything is building so if you never learn the lesson and you're kicking against the pricks and your desire is that strong in that area or that lesson that's being learned for you to overcome in that area, then you end up being stuck in the season. And we see many people that are stuck in the season that they haven't changed. You may have known them for 30, 20, 10 years, five years, and they're still the exact same person that they were when you met them that time ago because they're not receiving that specific um, that specific lesson that they're supposed to be learning in that season. And they're stuck there. So let us be mindful that Elohim is trying to prepare us and trying to build us up, but we have to be willing and able to be able to be built up. I'm okay. good, Casa. It was very good. Thank you for touching on that. That ability to be willing and able to go through the process of being built, being reformed, or being broken down to be rebuilt. It starts with faith, trusting that the building can be formed that he, the builder, can form it. Can you read Mark 9 and 23, please? Yahweh said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So let our mindset and affirmation when facing our struggles be as the true Christians who believed they could overcome their sins. Philippians 4 and 13, please. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a motto here at HRC, in the journey of perfection. And we pray it be for you all likewise, as our Lord didn't ask us to do anything that wasn't possible. Can you read Matthew 5 and 48, please? Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. That's what's required of us and possible to do, as it's Elohim doing it through Christ strengthening us, because our body and mind was made for them and their uses in righteousness, goodness, and truth. That's important for us to keep that daily affirmation or however many times a day we need to set our minds back to it to stay in that through Christ strengthening us it is possible for Allah to change us and we can be changed we have two witnesses of perfection being attainable 
in the Lord Christ in the flesh, and also Abram, who was perfect before Ahaya, through the Spirit of the Lord working in him. Keep in mind, Abraham was given the same opportunity to show himself perfect as we are. Can you read Jubilees 15 and 3, please? And Ahaya appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am Allah Almighty. Approve thyself before me and be thou perfect. See here, he had to show himself approved. So perfection took work to show oneself walking in it. He had to study the scriptures to know the word of the Lord to get to perfection, having it as a guide to correct or instruct him in good works. Can you read 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, please? All scripture is given by inspiration of Allah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of Allah may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We see all men need the scriptures, the word of Allah to be perfect and thoroughly furnished in good works. Abraham himself had to do this very same thing, studying the scriptures as we need it to get to perfection. Can you read Jubilees 12 and 25, please? It's speaking of Abraham. And he took the books of his fathers, and these were written in Hebrew, and he transcribed them. And he began from henceforth to study them. And I made known to him that which he could not understand. And he studied them during the six rainy months. Elohim gave him understanding in his studies to rightly divide the word, so that he may be approved unto him in good works and the right doctrine. Can you read Second Timothy 2 and 15, please? Study to show thyself approved unto Elohim, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mind you, as Zachwa pointed out, we actually have to go to men appointed to teach. So, Abraham was no different as he had to learn under Noah and Shem to be built up in the ways of Allah Hayim. So, we here today having to submit ourselves and learn from those whom Ahaya appointed as ministers in Yahweh's name is the same opportunity as believers had of old time. Can you read Jasher chapter 9 verse 10? And then verse 5 and 6, please. Joshua chapter 9, verse 10. And there was not a man found in those days in the whole earth who knew Ahia, for they served each man his own Elohim, except Noah and his household. And all those who were under his counsel knew Ahia in those days. So Noah was a prophet of Elohim, there to give counsel. And those who desired to know Allah submitted themselves under his counsel, Abraham being one of them. Can you read verse 5, please? And when Abram came out of the cave, he went to Noah and his son Shem, and he remained with them to learn the instruction of Ahiah in his ways. And Abram served Noah and Shem, his son, for a long time. There we see prophet and priests there to teach those who desired to know Ahiah. As Shem was the priest of the Most High, and Noah had been a prophet preaching repentance from the days of the flood. And then you also see, I'll give you a, a little further insight. Abraham, that time when Allah was teaching him, was after his time with Shem and Noah. So he had learned under them, and then Allah taught him himself directly because Abraham was a prophet also, as later on in his life. He started teaching others the service of Allah Hayim. And as you all already know, the prophets, Allah Hayim deals with them directly to teach them and such so that they can teach others. So through this here, we see that we have the same opportunity here in the end of this world with the two witnesses to come to learn the instructions of Ahaya and his ways in the fruits of the Spirit, as Abram did. Can you read verse 6, please? And Abram was in Noah's house thirty-nine years. And Abram knew Ahiah from three years old. 
And he went in the ways of Ahiah unto the days of his death, as Noah and his son Shem had taught him. So Abram had teachers to help him get to perfection. For us to understand the process of getting there hasn't changed to this day. Isaac learned under his father and Shem. Jacob learned from Abraham and Isaac and Rebecca, his mother. So we can know it's consistent. We have to actually go to the teachers Elohim has appointed. Let's see how things turned out for Abraham going through the process of perfection. Verse 11, please, and 12. And Abram, the son of Terah, was waxing great in wisdom in those days in the house of Noah, and no man knew it, and Ahiah was with him. And Ahiah gave Abram an understanding heart. All the works of that generation were vain, and that all their Elohims were vain and were of no avail. With Elohim opening his heart and understanding, taking the time to study himself and having the right guys from Elohim, Abraham's perfection was shown by his abstinence from evil. Once he got the wisdom and understanding through the words in the books, his teachers and Elohim opening his heart and teaching him as he was a prophet as well to understand what he needs to help him keep from the evil. A man who sincerely keeps from evil and humility is perfect in Elohim's sight, according to the testimonies. Can you read Joshua 22, 54, please? Mm -hmm. And Ahiah said to Satan, Hast thou thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon earth, a perfect and upright man before me, one that feareth Elohim and avoideth evil. That's for our assurance to know. If we fear him to be humble and sincerely keep from evil and having that righteous inclination that if we fall, we hurry up and confess it and get back to work, he will esteem us as perfect and upright, though even the devil himself makes accusations against us. Abraham was faithful in obedience. He wasn't deficient in bearing the fruits of the spirit. So we can know we as men can do it. Pastor, I want to touch on something real quick. Okay. We just read where it said that um, Abraham was growing great in wisdom. Where is it at? Um, in verse 11. Verse 11. All right. Oh, with that, Joshua 9 and 11. Mm -hmm. All right. It says... Um, and Abraham the son of Terah was waxing great in wisdom in those days in the house of Noah. All right? Now, this is where it starts tying together. He was waxing great in wisdom. Now, let's see, based off his great wisdom that he was waxing in, how he moved and how he operated. When Elohim spoke about him in Joshua chapter 22, verse 54, it says, And Ahia said to Satan, Hath thou dost consider my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon the earth. Now, we know that Abraham was waxing great in wisdom. So that would definitely differentiate him from others. For there is none like him upon earth, a perfect and upright man before me. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It says, one that feareth Allah him. So it takes two things. One, that you fear Allah him. Right? That fear is what brings the the self-control, the temperance, the uh, long-suffering, the abstaining. It says, one that feareth Elohim and avoideth evil. So, seeing that, that Abraham was operating in, in this great wisdom, he wouldn't put himself in an environment that would cause him to fall. He avoids the evil if it ever be possible. He avoids it. He doesn't go and put himself in circumstances where he's going to give himself into something that's not right or evil. And I think that's where many of us fall short when it comes to wisdom is being in environments that aren't good for us and having the choice 
to not be in that environment. And as I said, one that fear of Elohim and avoid of evil, I think it's the lack of fear of Elohim that causes us to put ourselves in these predicaments where we would fall because we're looking to fall because we want to give ourselves unto the evil. So we're self-sabotaging to get what we want, to fulfill our desire. And that's not the fear of Elohim. And that's not walking in that wisdom as Abraham walked in to avoid evil. I thought that was very interesting. That was good. I think that was important for putting things in perspective. Here's all in for that. Remember, we, we talked about our senses. We talked about our sense of smell. Like all these senses that Allah gives us, if we're not going to avoid things and utilize our senses, then what are we doing? We're sabotaging and leaving ourselves open for someone else's usage. Or our feet are swift to run to mischief. Yes. So it really puts in perspective what you need to work on or what we need to work on. Seeing that our feet are swift to run in a direction or our feet are swift to act out in our passions, but we're not quick to avoid it. For sure. And that is also a good uh, building spot. Because that feats being swift, it said in the priest that we read earlier in Surat chapter 2, um, make not haste in time of trouble. So that's mm -hmm. a big step in itself to stop and slow down when you feel that that resistance or something you're not at peace. You may even notice you something stop breathing. You. Yeah. You, one of your senses may be going off. You may stop breathing. Your eyes may, you may start, you can't see clearly, you know, the disturbance in your, in your um, aura, if you will. Stop and figure out what's going on i know we're about to go into fornication and lust but fornication and lust literally pulls you like if anyone has struggled with fornication or lust you know how it you literally lose control because it takes over so it definitely makes sense That fear of Allah to agree with the fear. You talked about it in the uh, lesson. There have been so many at this point, but it was one where we talked about the struggle that Adam and Eve had. They both feared, but they didn't agree themselves to say, I fear as well. Like, right. So that's important here with what you're saying to have that fear and to be fearful our own selves because remember we have choice so that let that fear be our choice i actually fear it's something i don't want to do yeah. amen you may find you get an experience and you find out hold on i didn't actually fear i wanted something else how are we going to take that experience to learn or to deter us we have choice. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely. That is a that is an interesting place to be in, to know what's right, and to justify your actions and wrongdoing. Excuse me. It's okay. While we're on it, we're on it here. You gotta understand. What spirit is leading me to justify my actions? Anger, wrath, 
Wrath blinds the mind to justify whatever's done. Wrath looks for provocation by a word. So because we may not want it to be, anger will get us to justify it. Or because we still want what we want and don't want to see it so we can fulfill what we want, we'll justify it. And to prove what Kasifo is saying, if there's ever an instance where you come into a scenario like that and somebody calls out what you did was wrong, see how you react to it. That'll let you know if it was anger or not. So you can actually prove, we can actually prove the spirit and see how you receive that correction in a scenario like that. That's good understanding. We're getting insight here to, to understand what's going on within. We're getting that knowledge from Alahayim to know what's happening so that we can make the right choices and confess the wrong choices we've been making. So that's a powerful work too that helps bring us out. All right. Let's see how Abraham feared Allah and kept himself from evil. And this is good off what we're building off of. Jubilee 17, verse 17 and 18, please. And Ahayim knew that Abraham was faithful in all his afflictions, for he had tried him through his country and with famine, and had tried him with the wealth of kings, and had tried him again through his wife when she was torn from him, and with circumcision, and had tried him through Ishmael and Hagar, and in everything wherein he tried him, he was found faithful. And his soul was not impatient, and he was not slow to act, for he was faithful and a lover of Ahia. Notice, he was not only faithful out of love for Ahia, to do what Allah commanded, but he also kept his commands in general, as that is the love of Allah. And for us as people, we can see Abraham was tried in just about everything you could be tried in. He was tried with leaving his comfort zone of where he was from. He was tried in his flesh with hunger and famine. He was tried with wealth, the love of money, or the glory of men. He was tried through his wife, his own spouse, someone near and dear to him. He was tried through that, having her taken from him. And if you looked at what happened in that story, he put his trust in Allah to pray unto Allah for deliverance, him and his wife. He didn't get in his feelings but he sat back and waited on Allah to do what he would do, trusting that Allah would deliver. He was tried with circumcision to fit something physically harming to your own body. He was tried in that. He was tried through his family, Ishmael and Hagar, his wife and son, having to separate for everyone's best interests at heart, knowing that Allah knows what's best, not getting in his feelings, to give in to his own passions as a man, but having that holy mind and that manly reign, he subjected all his senses to Allah uses. What Allah said, he did it in faith, trusting in Allah. Even though to men it might not look like the right thing to do. And he was not impatient or slow to act. For he was faithful and a lover of Ahaya. So that's a sign of faithfulness and love for Ahaya. Not being impatient and not being slow to act on what Allah Hayyam said to do. Okay. Kelsey, you don't mind? I want to touch on that part you're just talking about right now. I was ready for that one. It says. <laughs> Uh, it says, 
and his soul was not impatient. Mm -hmm. That I think, and it's right next to he was not slow to act. And those two things, I think a lot of people will get, um, will get blended because his soul was not impatient. That means that he wasn't hasty. He wasn't hasty to go and do something on his own accord. But at the same time, he was not slow to act according to Elohim's righteousness or Elohim's word. I think that knowing the difference in those two really will help you grow in wisdom. Because a lot of people, they get hasty thinking they're doing righteousness. When there's no righteousness that can come from hastiness. No, so you can see him. how, right, you see how it's like, it's very, very intricate, but at the same time, it's very simple because they're two different things. And a, a person of faith and understanding has to understand that, that your soul still has to be patient. And when you get instruction, you still have to be patient in that instruction. You can't just run off and be hasty because Allah said to do it. Because then you're giving yourself over to haste. You have to be patient. Even when you're acting, you just can't be slow to do it when Allah tells you to do it. So that patience is a work in general. Your soul should always be patient. Patient to speak. Patient to act. And wait on Allah to give instruction. Exercising that patience. But when Allah gives understanding, don't drag your feet to do it. And don't be hasty to run and be swift to do it. But be patient still. And do it in patience. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. The patience have a perfect work. <laughs> right. In everything. <laughs> Makes sense why James stuck on patience. <laughs> Let her have a perfect word. Yeah. That you may be entire wanting nothing. Wanting for nothing. All right. Wow. Okay. Praise the Lord for that. So, <laughs> let's grasp this verse too. Can you read Genesis 26 and 5, please? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments and my statutes and my laws. So Abraham was able to do that because he was patient in everything. In his soul and in his operations. And we're going to see it in how he dealt. Okay, coming up. Abraham depended on Allah for help to fulfill all good things. He didn't just think it was something he could do of himself. But as Zachbar spake on in the last lesson, we have to know our insignificance and ask of Allah for help. And Abraham was an example of that as he asked for deliverance from the evil spirits to be kept from the evil thoughts in his prayers so that he could do what was right. Can you read Jubilees 12 and 18, please? Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts. And let them not lead me astray from thee, my Elohim. So you see how his prayers were heard by how he operated in the fruits of the Spirit in his life. But you also see his understanding of his insignificance. He knew the spiritual warfare and knew deliverance 
in his wisdom, he knew deliverance could only come if he prayed unto Allah and for it. And there's another portion in Jibreel's where he's praying over Jacob and blessing him. He, and he was also saying that may Allah Hayyam strengthen him to do all what's right. And may Allah Hayyam cleanse him, purge him from his iniquities and his whatever sins of ignorance he may have committed. We really have to make our supplications known to Allah Hayyam, giving ourselves unto him, because it's really not possible without him. Well, let's see how Abraham dealt in patience in everything he did. Okay. If you can, we're going to jump in here when his wife Sarah died. If you could kind of put yourself in the emotional mind state of man would be in a wife of his wife. Or did, he was married to her for however, um, was it over a hundred years they were married. So you could see the emotional connection, the the vulnerability of the situation. But let's see how this man, through the holy mind and faith and patience and spirit, operated. All right. Jubilees 18, verse 3, please. And Abraham went to mourn over her and bury her. And we tried him to see if his spirit were patient. And he were not indignant in the words of his mouth. And he was found patient in this, and was not disturbed, for in patience of spirit he conversed with the children of Heth to the intent that they should give him a place in which to bury his dead. And Ahia gave him grace before all who saw him, and he besought in gentleness the sons of Heth. Jubilees 19 and 8, please. This is the tenth trial wherewith Abraham was tried, and he was found faithful, patient in spirit. His patience. Elohim is trying our patience to see what we're going to do because our patience shows our faithfulness. And you see, it's like what I talked about taking everything is from Elohim. Here we see that it's really true. What Abraham went through, what he went through, he was being tried to see if his spirit were patient. So knowing that Allah knows our thoughts, there's nothing hid from him, and he's always watching, know that every experience we're being tried to see if we're patient. And his patience was from his soul, and also you can see he was patient as he was not indignant in the words of his mouth. I want to get that word indignant to make sure we have that meaning. It means feeling or showing anger or annoyance at what is perceived as unfair treatment. So his words, he wasn't in his feelings and he wasn't annoyed or angered because if you know, he was already promised that land. So that whole land that the Canaanites were living was was actually his land. But in his humility, he didn't look at it as such or let that lead him to lift himself up, to think anything of himself. But he remained in humility, patient, going through the process Allah had, loving people and dealing in love, regardless of his own circumstances, because he was focused on doing what would edify others. You know, he wasn't pleasing himself and just caught up in like, man, my wife just died and you don't know how it feels. Like, I need a better place right now. You know, he was still focused on Allah. I am, you know, knowing that it was a trial. It was a test. And there was still the right way to operate regardless of what was going on. He did, He held himself accountable. He didn't give himself an excuse to sin or sabotage, if you will, to find a way to give in to his emotions. Right. And this is a key note for understanding our growth in faith is shown by 
our growth in patience, not to be disturbed no matter what befalls us. And this goes right back to perfection of our long suffering, not to give angry temper any place in us to keep our long suffering pure, where Allah and his spirit dwells. These two things, patience without being disturbed and long suffering with no anger are symptoms of the perfection of our faith. Okay. We see us growing in that. We know our faith is being perfected. All right. And if you see areas of struggling, reason about it, work it out, reach out to your counselors that keep the law to get understanding because it may be something you're lacking that Allah wants you to understand through his ministers to get to that next um, level of your faith. I don't want you to forget mercy. Uh, okay. Because mercy is um mercy comes before long suffering. Because let's just say for example something happens. Let's say someone does something. Right? whether it be to you or whether it be to another person, right? And your initial reaction shows whether or not you have mercy or not. Because your initial reaction shows whether you have pity for that person or you're going to get in anger with that person. And... The only way you can have long suffering is if you have mercy. Because if I if I lack mercy and my initial response isn't the response that would keep me in long suffering because I can be quote unquote long suffering but it's not true long suffering. I can be long suffering and be angry but that's not the true long suffering of Alahayim. According to Alahayim, I have to be long suffering and I have to be patient and joyful and cheerful in my long suffering. Now, how can I be joyful and cheerful in my long suffering if I'm lacking mercy in my response, not having pity on a person? seeing that it's something that Allah may be trying to teach them or grow them in, but I'm taking it personal as a personal attack, though it may be something that they didn't even do to me, though it may be something that they did do to me. I'm looking at it as a personal attack, not having mercy. How can I stay in long suffering? Or how can I be in long suffering? How can I exercise patience? So that's why I'm saying those three things I feel really, really go together and it makes us it makes you a strong individual. Because if you're lacking in one of those, it it corrupts the whole work. For sure. That's good. Thank you. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Let's continue seeing how Abraham operated in those spirits in his interaction with the folks during that experience. In verse 9, please. And he said not a single word regarding the rumor in the land, how the Elohim had said that he would give it to him and to a seed after him. And he begged the place there to bury his dead. For he was found faithful and was recorded on the heavenly tables as the friend of Elohim. His obedience to Allah, his patience, his gentleness and faithfulness out of love for Allah, and lack of boasting, no matter what was going on, led him not only to be perfect to Allah, but also to be counted as his friend. So through him, we see a man can attain through the spirit of Christ to be perfect and a friend of Allah. 
And we also know mercy strengthened him to be able to do these things. And humility. Yes. Uh, it said he begged the place. Like to beg somebody to have mercy on you. That's humility. He was very humble. He had no sense of entitlement. Because even they wanted to give it to him for free, but he didn't use it opportunity for himself. He wanted to pay the fair price. Even though the land was his, he wanted to do what was right for the lion. Just waiting to just measure. Yeah. Kept the law. Now, all that we talked about thus far is understanding faith for the perfecting of our mind, our body, our soul, and to have the proper uses of our senses. And faith is essential because if we let it enter into our heart or mind or our doctrine that we speak or teach, that it's not possible to be perfect and keep the commandments given from Allah Hayyam and Lord Yache. We are condemning ourselves, so we have to be sincere about our belief in the possibility of being perfect through Allah Hayyam by Christ strengthening us. Can you read Hermas Mandate 12, chapter 3, verse 4, and th verse 4 to 6, please? I say to him, sir, these commandments are great and beautiful and glorious and are able to gladden the heart of the man who is able to observe them. But I know not whether these commandments can be kept by a man, for they are very hard. This is a doctrine that if a man could do it, it would be great and glad in his heart. But a man can't do it because they are hard, so we really can't be perfect. Let's get the view of Allah Hayyam and his angels in regards to this doctrine or belief so we can know what our perspective is to be when aligned with Allah Hayyam in faith and not doubting. Continue, please. He answered and said unto me, If thou said it before thyself that they can be kept, thou wilt easily keep them, and they would not be hard. If we set that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us and all things are possible for us with Allah Hayyam, to change and become perfect in whatever we need to to overcome before ourselves as our perspective and outlook this journey will be easy because of how we look at it in faith but if we let the devil convince us otherwise his spirit of doubt has entered our heart and let's see what we are doing for ourselves through the devil's doctrine. Continue, please. But if it once enter into thy heart that they cannot be kept by a man, thou would not keep them. If the devil's daughter, doubt, and the evil woman of unbelief enter our heart to think all the commandments cannot be kept to become perfect, we won't be able to keep them. So you see how our faith and outlook, or perspective, if you will, is the foundation of the direction we will go. If we don't believe our body and mind is made for the Lord and ourselves and give ourselves over to the uses of Allah Hayyam, believing we can be useful vessels for his son's spirit and his Holy Spirit through Christ strengthening us for Allah Hayyam to perfect us, the devil will fulfill his will in us. Through unbelief and disobedience, the other evil woman finding place in us to keep us from fulfilling the commands to our own condemnation because we didn't receive the doctrine of faith in Allah Hayyam to perform the works in us and love of the truth that it is possible with him. Continue, please. But now I say unto thee, if thou keep them not but neglect them, Thou shalt not 
have salvation. Neither thy children, nor thy house, since thou hast already pronounced judgment against thyself that these commandments cannot be kept by a man. If we understand the severity of believing, we can't be perfect. So a man has to have faith. Believing is possible with Allah Hayyam through Christ and work at keeping the commands so that his body may be a vessel for the Lord's uses and receive the Holy Spirit, keeping himself from the belief in the devil's doctrine where the commands are difficult and perfection is not possible because of doubt, unbelief, and disobedience to Allah Hayyam have been placed in us. For us to believe the devil's teachings, we will condemn ourselves and our families because of the lie entering our hearts to believe contrary to the doctrine of Allah Hayyam. Hopefully you see here that our faith comes with work and the commandments with belief of attainability of perfection as our perspective and outlook to keep us on track with Allah Hayyam. Now this is going to take work, starting in our minds to reason and set this perspective before us as our own, since our mind is where Allah Hayyam placed his law to govern our whole body and our senses so that we may be for the Lord's uses. If we see we're struggling, we have to show forth humility to pray and get help from his ministers to do things according to his order, since he placed people in the faith for the perfecting of the saints to help us humbly, not to think we will get the understanding on our own or seek to get it on our own. So we have to go pray first and seek for understanding of what's needful for us to fulfill his will so that we may understand what we need and ask for it according to his will in faith that he will give it to us for our salvation. Remember, the choice and effort is our own to choose and put in. Just remember to be compassionate towards yourself. Like any bad habit, it's hard to break at first, but as you get more seasoned, it becomes easier until it's natural and it becomes a way of life. Okay? So it's a reprogramming here. A rebuilding. Amen. you know what I find it interesting um, when the angel Fenuel is talking to Hermes and he says um, if thou keep them not but neglect them thou shalt not have salvation neither thy children nor thy household since thou hast already pronounced judgment against thyself it's interesting because if you can't believe that it can be kept by a man You've already instilled doubt into your house. Yeah. So you can't build off a of doubt. You've already, you've instilled doubt in yourself. You've instilled doubt in your wife. You've instilled doubt in your children. You, you have taken away their faith to get salvation. Makes the doctrine is just going through the motions. See, tell them some. There's no end goal. Yeah, <laughs> there's Literally. no end goal. It's like, look, do these things because it's the right thing to do, but you're never going to be able to do all of them. So that's doesn't make sense, right? The defeated mindset. Promotes the hypocrisy. It doesn't help be accountable. Oh, it doesn't. Anytime something goes wrong, well, I'm just a man anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, I can actually do it and you get to continue with your life. Yeah, until it's against you. Or well, yeah, I'd say with just a man. I think that's where that whole false doctrine of him not having a father came in so that people could have that excuse or that um, justification that they can't do it and he wasn't just a man. So he was able to do it and it, it makes that it makes the dichotomy where you now have a justification when you fall short. But Yache came the same way we did. He had a father and a mother, and he was able to do it all. And he knows it. He knows what we got to go through in this life. He has mercy, but he also knows that it's, a, it's attainable. Alahayim wouldn't ask us to do something that's impossible. And there's other men that have done it. So that's <laughs> other than Yache. So it's right. like, what other excuses do we have? Women too. Zippor was upright. Right. Yeah. Rebecca. Judith. Oh, going further. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, going further. <laughs> Perfect. Even um, John's parents, his father and his uh, mother uh, were blameless. Zachariah and Elizabeth. Yeah, they were blameless. In the midst of a crooked generation, they were blameless. Abraham was in the midst of a crooked generation, and he was blameless. Right. He became blameless. Everybody went through their process. Everybody, even Abraham, you read Jubilees and Jasha, it tells of how he was trying to find Allah Hayim, and he worshipped right. the sun for the day and the moon for the night. And he's like, hold on, this isn't it. And then he realized, you know, that's not Allah Hayim. So everybody has a process, but you get there through sincerely seeking Zipporah. Right. Her father was an idolater. But she learned from a teacher. Moses taught her. He had 10 years. He was teaching her. So he took time. She became upright. Even her father converted after seeing what Allah did. You know. It's attainable. The 12 patriarchs, they went through their experiences. Yes, they did. It's attainable. The journey. So, you just have to have a direction for the journey. Yeah. <laughs> Perfection. Right. Yeah, I see. That manly reign. Emmanuel. We need the perfection of that man being in us. And we touch on one thing that this mindset, that set purpose, a goal, a focus, mercy, patience, long suffering, without anger, without being disturbed, knowing what we're working towards so that we can actually get to it and holding ourselves accountable to it and believing it's possible, knowing that it's not our doing, it's, it's going to help us as it helped many that we read about in the scriptures. Can we read Testament in Nathalie chapter 2, verse 6 to 10, please? As a man's strength, so also is his work. And as his mind, so also is his skill. And as his purpose, so also is his achievement. As his heart, so also is his mouth. As his eye, so also is his sleep. As his soul, so also is his word. Either in the law of the Lord 
or in the works of Belia. So this helps us know what manifests out of us is letting us know what's in us to help us learn ourselves and see what we need to work on. Where our faith, belief, and perspective is, there will our strength, mind, purpose, heart, mouth, eye, soul, and words be. It's going to be on either on Alahayim's side or on the other side. There are only two sides, and we have to hold ourselves accountable to Alahayim's side and conform ourselves to his side in the areas we find we lack oneness or agreement with him. That process and what's needful to perfect us is a bit different for every man since none of us are created the same. Can you continue, please? And there is a division between light and darkness, between seeing and hearing. So also is there a division between man and man and between woman and woman. And it is not to be said that the one is like the other, either in face or in mind. For Allah made all things good in their order. So, everybody's different. Now, people can struggle with the same spirits. Remember, a spirit's a spirit. So you may see some of the same tendencies in people because of the same spiritual struggles. But, each person is different in their mind, so it might work on them differently in their mind to get them to fulfill its works, if that helps. And who are we? These are spiritual things, and that's why we need Allah Hayyam praying unto him for understanding and help to be given for the perfecting of the saints to us for our individual needs as he made us all and knows what will help us further yield ourselves unto him in our minds and bodies. You have that Ephesian scripture that talks about he, who he gave to help with these things. Um, it said Ephesians 4, 8, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So, you have Yache giving gifts unto men because he put men in the earth to help. And what gifts did he give these men? Verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. For what purpose were these gifts given? Verse 12, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Just as Abraham had to go get edification, Jacob, Isaac, the patriarchs, as even Gad said, what he isn't taught by man, he learns through repentance. So you need to get that help for what you're struggling with and get that insight for what you're struggling with from the men Allah has appointed. Don't let pride lead you to try to do it on your own. Because that's not the order Allah has set. All right? And that's not how our forefathers got the perfection. <laughs> they got help too. All right. All right. If you don't have anything, let's continue understanding the things Allah Hayyam made for good in their order. We in Naphtali chapter 2 verse 8. Continue in that verse, please. The five senses in the head. Touch, taste, smell, sight, hearing. All given for his uses in our mind and body. Continue, please. And he joined on the neck to the head adding to it the hair also for comeliness and glory, then the heart for understanding. The heart was given to understand his uses for us. So that's why the wholehearted, single-minded approach is necessary to be a one understanding with him, like we talked about in love as a boundary lesson. 
continue whenever you're ready. The belly for excrement and the stomach for grinding. The windpipe for taking in the breath. The liver for wrath. The gall for bitterness. The spleen for laughter. The reins for prudence. The reins for prudence. Prudence is the ability to govern and discipline oneself by the use of reason. Sagacity or shrewdness in the management of affairs. To be shrewd is marked by clever discerning awareness and hard-headed acumen. Acumen is keenness and depth of perception, discernment, or discrimination, especially in practical matters. So the third definition of prudence is skill and good judgment in the use of resources. To sum up these definitions and understanding of the range for prudence, there is confirmation again of the mind's importance to set right and guard with skill and understanding of Allah Hayim's laws to ensure we are fulfilling Allah Hayim's will through reason and right to ensure we are using all our resources he has given us in our senses, which are encompassed as well in the eight spirits he has given us to help us and our bodies through skillfulness and attention to detail in good judgment in his law. Just that in itself to for our reigns for prudence, knowing our mind was given to us to use skill and good judgment in the use of the resources Allah has given us, we hopefully see that's why it's so important to take our time and be patient. Because haste is not going to allow us to act in prudence. It's not going to allow us to take our time and be sure that we're governing and disciplining ourselves by use of reason. Because Allah wants us to think things through and make sure it's right according to the commandments. Whereas hastiness works with the spirit of the devil and hatred towards Allah to get us to just act and fulfill a desire. Or to be provoked in wrath and anger to just go and do something. Or be eager because we're covered in to just go and do something. Or listen to some thought process that doesn't actually make sense according to the law, but it's beguiling our souls to get us to just go and do something. So hopefully grasping the importance of being slow in spirit and patient in spirit to take our time and act on Allah Hayim's will and ensure what we're acting on or desiring to act on is actually Allah Hayim's will. You got anything, Zephyr? No, I'm good. Okay. Let's continue with what Allah gave us, please. The muscles of the loins for power. The lungs for drawing in. The loins for strength. And so forth. So then, my children, let all your works be done in order and with good intent in the fear of Allah Hayim. Know we are made mind, body, and soul, for his spirit and uses, we have to ensure all of our being is with good intent in his fear. Continue, please. And do nothing disorderly and scorn or out of his due season. That's pride and fornication and the lust thereof that causes disorderliness and undue season with the doubt and unbelief at work helping our disobedience. Continue, please. For if thou bid the eye to hear, it cannot. So neither while ye are in darkness can you do the works of light. Mm. So without understanding the light of the law to know us right in fulfilling Allah will and believing you can actually fulfill what Allah am commanded. We cannot do the works of light. That's why it's important to learn the commandments and do them, believing in them 
and that if we keep ourselves from all evil, we will have salvation. So that we may know Allahim's doctrine when we do his will, since it takes doing his will to know his doctrine and light in his commandments. Proverbs 6, verse 23 and 24, please. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproof of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. That's letting us know what will protect us in our minds. Strange women and evil women, these are the daughters of the devil and the twelve evil women that lead astray the servants of Allah and from the kingdom. So the commandment and law keeps us from that daughter of the devil called doubt and the other strange women of unbelief and disobedience and also the other daughter of the devil called sorrow. So we can keep faith and belief and cheerfulness in the midst of our process of faith and belief to obey Allah and give our senses and body unto Allah uses. These words of Allah kept the faithful and can keep us. Can you read Psalms 119 verse 105, then 104, and then 101 and 102, please? Psalms 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119 and 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Psalms 119 and 101. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, but thou hast taught me. Knowing it's Allah I am teaching us to keep his words to be perfect, let's beware of covetousness and irascibility to be hasty or the spirit of lying to corrupt our doings from what Allah I am made us for. Can you read Naphtali, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, please? Be ye therefore not eager to corrupt your doing through covetousness or with vain words to beguile your souls. So, know it's our own desires and lusts that make us hasty to do something that's not right. It can also be the lies we give heed to or tell ourselves to beguile our own souls to do something that's not right, which lust is also a catalyst in getting us to give heed to or tell lies as well to fulfill a desire. What can help us overcome? Continue reading, please. Because if ye keep silence and purity of heart, ye shall understand how to hold fast the will of Allah and to cast away the will of Belier. The power of quieting the mind and searching our heart's desire and intent to make sure it's pure, examining by the law and doing nothing without discretion and counsel from Allah is powerful to save us. That in itself, let's understand racing thoughts, you feeling anxious and all that, slow down. Take your time. Go through the precepts to get understanding so you can hate every false way. David did it. That's him. He sat and took the time to reason. Go get your understanding, and I'm going to reason with myself so that I also hate the false way that you described in your law that I'm one with what you believe. We have to be sure that we work through having pleasure in something that's not right so that we can actually stop doing it. Is there going to cost Um, No, you can go ahead. Okay. As far as being faced with adversity, uh, it'd be good to stop breathe and pray that would be a really good um thing to implement to to stop from being hasty 
into giving yourself over to whatever passion or whatever it is that is causing you to to be hasty uh also um as far as growth in your walk um this is where investigating the deity actually plays into the picture to actually grow you in faith is by doing you may be doing things according to how you may have learned how to do it and you get and you see the results of what you're doing based off of what it is that you've learned to do in your life or what you learned to implement now this is where investigating the deity comes in to actually work on that faith so that you can actually start making the necessary changes to actually breaking the habits of the things that you may have learned in your life where investigating the deity you would um come into a, a scenario or a situation and you would research or learn how Alahayim wants you to deal with that type of situation. Now, instead of doing the thing that you are used to doing, you will then implement what Alahayim has instructed for you to do so that you can actually investigate the deity. So you can see the reaction or the response or the results of the actions that you implemented based on what Allah has required you to do in a situation. So you can actually use that uh, analytics or that, um, that information that you got from the results of what you just implemented. And now you can compare and contrast how it went when you were doing the thing that you were doing before and when you implemented what Allah had actually told you to do and you can see the fruit of it and you can actually investigate the deity to see that what Allah had you to do actually worked out better for you and I know 10 times 10 times out of 10 it's gonna work out better for you I have no doubt in my mind for about that the only thing is is knowing exactly what Allah wants you to do and executing it so you have to actually execute what he actually told you to do and that right there will give you your contrast for you to actually investigate the deity thank you thank you i'm done Kelsey. thank you sir seeing that we're Allahim's creation we are held to the same standard as the other parts of creation. Can you read in verse 2, please? Sun and moon and stars change not their order. So do ye also change not the law of Elohim in the disorderliness of your doings. Just as creation was created to serve his purposes... Let us also render our heart, soul, mind, and bodies to the uses it was created for, ordering ourselves according to the law, so as not to be disorderly in anything. This has a reward for us. Naphtali chapter 8 verse 4 to 10, please. If you work that which is good, my children, both men and angels shall bless you. And Elohim shall be glorified among the Gentiles through you, and the devil shall flee from you, and the wild beast shall fear you, and the Lord shall love you, and the angel shall cleave to you, as a man who has trained a child well is kept in kindly remembrance. So also for a good work there is a good remembrance before Elohim. But him that doeth not that which is good, both angels and men shall curse. The Elohim shall be dishonored among the Gentiles through him, and the devil shall make him his own peculiar instrument. So we see doing wrong takes us away from being Elohim's instrument. Continue, please. And every wild beast shall master him. The evil spirits will also master us to do their will in us. Continue, please. And the Lord shall hate him. 
He is a spirit, and he sees the spirits we are in company with, and he weighs it to see where we, what side we're on. And he doesn't have conquered with evil, so he wants us to hate and abstain from the devil and his spirits too, so we can be perfect with him. Continue, please. For the commandments of the law are twofold, and through prudence must they be fulfilled. Look at that. The law has to be fulfilled through prudence, through reasoning, taking our time, being attentive, being skillful, understanding the law and how to apply the law. It has to be done through that. Prudence is mental action or activity that is intellectual or moral insight. Prudence, wisdom. Prudence to take our time and reason on doing right and making our perspective align with Allah Hayim to do right sincerely and wholeheartedly is essential to actually fulfill the commandments. So we are on the right path, harping on reasoning and taking our time to ensure we're reasoning right according to the law. Continue, please. For there is a season for a man to embrace his wife and a season to abstain there from for his prayer. So then there are two commandments, and unless they be done in due order, they bring very great sin upon men. That's an example of prudence in the commandments. Doing not only what is lawful, but also expedient with everyone's best interests at heart. Continue, please. So also is it with the other commandments. Be ye therefore wise in Allah, my children, and prudent, understanding the order of his commandments and the laws of every word that the Lord may love you. Mm. We gain our wisdom, prudence, and understanding of the order of the commands and laws through prayer, humility, Allah ministers, and keeping the commands just as Abraham did, so we can know we can do this too. And in the end, Allah is going to love us for it. With this, hopefully this helps for understanding our purpose and what we were created for and what we need to focus on also to know for the next lesson, our mind, body, and senses was not made for fornication, but for the Lord. Can you read? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 13 and 20, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Allah in your body and in your spirit, which are Allah Hopefully through this lesson, you've learned how to glorify Allah in our body and our spirits through Lord Yachi. Anything else, Zakwa? Um, Just stay encouraged and stay focused. Um, For me, my thing that always gets me back re realigned and refocused is saying to myself, I have to keep my eyes on Yache. Yache is my standard. Yache is who I follow. And it keeps me from being a respected person. It keeps me from um from um judging myself um uh, with men. Um what what's the word? Um Casa, not judging myself with men, but um, comparing myself with men. When I keep my eyes on Yache, it it literally keeps me focused, and it's um, it keeps me in the right spirit. So, just giving some um, some encouragement to keep your eyes on Yache and his standard. And that'll help you in many different situations and scenarios where you may find yourself in 
a, a place where you could be given unto your passions or you could be given unto um, a pride or whatever the case is that will try to pull you away or try to get you to be hasty. Know yourself. Know when you're not in that place of peace and get yourself realigned quickly through sitting down and breathing or praying, staying still until you are back in a good place. For me, I don't I don't like moving when I'm not where I need to be because I know that I have more um there's more room for me to err. So I'm very, very um I'm very, very slow to act and very, very patient um, for that reason. And I try and I work very, very hard to be patient and slow to act and very, very slow in everything that I do for the for the reason being not to be hasty to fall. So it definitely gives me less chances of falling by being slow. You got anything, Hassan? Mm, that was great. Thank you. Um, for me, what we discussed in this lesson is big for me. The faith aspect, the belief to stay away from doubting. That helps me stick through the course of going through the process I need to go through for my growth. And taking everything as a learning experience and seeing where I can go from there to get better at what I'm working at. And knowing what I'm working at, of complete patience without being disturbed and the long suffering without being in angered and working to have mercy as my first inclination. And if I see mercy wasn't my first inclination to sit down and process that, why didn't I have it? What, what do I need to do to have it as my first inclination? And if I don't feel I got the understanding, I reach out <laughs> and talk about it to make sure I get what I need, not leaving a stone unturned because it'll cause me to fall if I don't deal with it. As the narcissistic cycle goes, if I let it seep and un left undealt with, it's going to cause me to mess up. So big for me for belief and not doubting and reaffirming that it's possible to be done. Amen. It is possible. You just got to do it. Right. Well, all right. <laughs> I hope you go. all enjoy it. Yeah. You going to go? Okay. Go ahead. Please, I've talked enough. <laughs> all right. Make sure you guys visit the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. Um, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, if you enjoy the content, please share it. Um, you have permission from us to put it on social media, whatever you want to do. It's Alahayim's work. Uh, we, we hope everybody is learning and growing from all the information and we give glory and praise to Alahayim, to Haya Yachin Rakodoshi for all that they're doing for us all here in these times and we love you all. We praise Alahayim for you. Amen. Peace be with y'all. Ciao. Ciao. HRC, 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 HRC,